Welcome to episode three of The Context. This will be a little bit different than the previous uh, two because you will actually be seeing the recording of a conference uh, talk that I just delivered in London as part of Transvision 2019. I am going to talk to you about the challenges of adapting to the rapid changes that we are seeing in society and the fact that our traditional systems, uh, the schools that we attend, the workplace that uh, trains us, uh, society at large are equally unprepared to make sure that we can lead a dignified life. So what are the 21st century life design skills? How can we learn them? And how can we keep learning them because it is not a process that is going to end any time? These are the topics that I cover uh, in this talk, and I hope you will enjoy it. Let's give a welcome to David Orban. Thank you very much. Uh, for me, it is always a pleasure to talk to audiences like you, and I wish these to be also conversations, and I invite you to connect online. I'm very easy to find. And of course, send your questions to be discussed after uh, our uh, sequence of, of uh, 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 expositions, uh, but also the questions that come afterwards. Because uh, exponential times are naturally complex, and the uncertainty around them uh, is such that we are not always sure what are the right questions we need to be asking. Uh, even those who are uh, knee deep or neck deep uh, in issues of uh, exponential change often forget that we are not talking about logistics curves. We are not talking about closed world scenarios. It is actually generation after generation of exponential technologies that design the curve that we describe. And this acceleration has been with us for hundreds of thousands of years. It is technology that defines humanity with which we co-evolve. Our dreams of creating societies that realize further and further opportunities are now what are at the basis of the fine-grained mapping of the world and of our understanding as we create a planetary superstructure. And these enabling technologies uh, are all over around us and supporting us in our daily activities. I want to highlight three of them. The Internet of Things, blockchain, and AI and robotics that, and this is an important supporting argument of my thesis, are leading unavoidably actually unstoppably away from hierarchical organizations towards decentralization. I'm not alone in, in thinking this. Uh, Peter Diamandis, one of the founders of uh, Singularity University, Fred Wilson, a prominent uh, New York-based investor, uh, Ray Kurzweil, who is uh, uh, today a director of engineering at, at Google, and also uh, a founder of Singularity University as well as uh, Barack Obama, uh, we are all thinking that decentralization uh, is the future as these technologies are enabling a new kind of society. As a matter of fact, I do believe that without solid and sustainable technologies, social and economic change cannot happen. But when these technologies become available, the change that they engender becomes unstoppable. And that is what we are now seeing. Because these technologies are undermining the nation state supporting pillars, and they are leading us towards a new kind of global socioeconomic organization that I call network society. There are many uh, examples that we are seeing of this already happening in energy, manufacturing, 
food, health, learning, finance, security, policy making. And since these are independent trends, that is why we can uh, support the argument that the shift is unstoppable. And what we need is a toolbox of new skills and new abilities that enable us to overcome our natural tendency to see the negatives, to live in a state of fear. Bureaucracies are natural enemies in this because they are incentivized to propagate the status quo. Actually, they are elected or appointed in order to give impossibly sure answers to questions that we are barely able to articulate. They are resistant based on uh, precautionary principles that reduce all of us uh, to a, a state of defenseless infants hiding their real state of panic. And overreact like an immune system that if you are allergic to nuts is ready to kill you rather than uh, attempting of, of, of eating a, a, a nut, they have been able to slow down or even completely stop progress in many important instances. Like five or six years ago when they declared that solar shouldn't be deployed in Hawaii anymore because the uh, grid of the island couldn't take it. Or like the International Energy Agency that for the past 20 years has declared that the growth of solar is peaked and it will not grow anymore even if year after year they have been proven wrong, they kept making policy recommendations and global infrastructure investment reports based on this tragic fallacy. Or like the Food and Drug Administration that tells you that all of you are too dumb in order to uh, be allowed to get access to your sacred code of DNA and the priesthood of physicians and doctors are the only ones who should be allowed to read that text instead of you being able to do so directly. Or the state of New York that uh, for after a century of being at the center of uh, uh, financial innovation uh, threw in the towel and said no more. Uh, the threat of uh, Bitcoin and blockchain for our existing interests is too big. We'd better implement re a regulatory environment that makes it so risky and so expensive to set up uh, a, a blockchain startup in the state of New York to make it impossible. And as a consequence, uh, after 2014, New York stopped being the center of uh, blockchain innovation that spread out elsewhere. Except that if it is true that this change is unstoppable, the reaction of a panic is unneeded, unnecessary. Even at the level of nation states that are starting to realize that their era is over. The influence of nation states is diminishing as expressed in a conference in 2014 by the United States Department of State. The phase transition has already started. But the panic is not only on the side of organizations, nations, enterprises. This reaction is also natural on the level of individuals because we feel this uncertainty in our lives regardless of whether we are enrolled at, uh, uh, in college with no um, clear understanding of what, of what our professional trajectory is going to be after we graduate, or whether we are in our 50s and we have just been, been made uh, redundant and we are looking around for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years of productive life uh, we have in front of us uh, uh, where we need to support ourselves and our, our families. 
So we really need new 21st century skills. And there have been organizations busy trying to understand what these are in literacy, where we need to go beyond, of course, being able to write and read and, and, and uh, do mathematics. Just as uh, it would have been difficult for the mid 20th century to hire somebody who would say, oh, I am perfect for this job, but by the way, I cannot read and write. Today, for every practical purpose, somebody who says, I am perfect for this job, but by the way, I can't use computers or smartphones, they are unemployable. Equally, social skills, flexibility, adaptability, being self-driven, but being also able to adapt to rich cultural environments in an accountable and productive manner. Being able to learn and innovate through tools like critical thinking, collaboration, being curious and creative. During the social economic transition that we are about to see, incredible dogmatic assumptions about society are going to fall. If you ask the Roman slave if his life was just, the answer would have been no, naturally not. But if you ask the follow-on question, could he imagine a society without slavery? He wouldn't have been able to. Just as, just a hundred years ago or a little more, we were absolutely convinced that child labor was essential. And actually, you can find um, very erudite articles in the Times of London, where at the uh, mid, uh, at the second half of the 18th century, uh, the uh, local entrepreneurs are saying, please do not pass any legislation that uh, prohibits child labor uh, because the empire will fall. Now, what are the dogmatic assumptions about society that will be as laughably wrong as these have proven to be over the course of the next 10 or 20 years? That is your homework. And as the nation states are going to fall, isn't it the case that antiquated labels like unemployed have to fall on the wayside? Because the social contract is not a natural law. In the past, we have proven that uh, contrary to the universal law of gravitation, when feudalism has proven to be uh, outcompeted by other ways of organizing society, well, feudalism gave way. Except that at the time, we employed very convenient but blunt instruments of wars and revolutions in order to uh, give uh, way and, and create space for the new society to be born. And today, we don't have that luxury. In a world of nuclear weapons and globally connected societies, war and revolutions are simply unavoid, unavailable, as most of the nations realize, except a few. Now, I want to give you actionable examples of what I mean by the skills that we can all acquire. Because learning these skills cannot require a 10-year academic curriculum. It can be acquired rapidly through experiential learning, just through the desire of getting started and making simple steps. The examples that you will see are companies uh, where I invested or advised. And if you want, after this conference or even now with your phones, you can go and start acquiring the skills that I'm talking about. For example, Sun Exchange is a South African company that allows you to own cells in a solar plant installed in the sunniest locations on the planet. And that solar cell or multiple cells is going to generate for the next 10, 20 years the financial yield that you can then use for whatever you want, for example, to abate your local energy costs. 
and there will be no more any consultant that can come to you and say, oh, sorry, I would like to adopt uh, uh, solar, but my roof is oriented on the wrong uh, direction. Or, sorry, you live in Norway where it's dark six months out of the year, solar energy is unavailable, unavailable to you. And this is a globally distributed resource that makes energy itself location independent. And you receive a monthly payment in Bitcoin in your digital wallet streaming African solar energy wherever you are. Or Wealth Migrate that uh, removed the barrier to uh, global commercial grade real estate investment, something that typically would cost uh, a wealthy family office one, two million dollars per year just to manage, now can be achieved at $1,000 or less. Or Shivam, that is able to uh, have you control uh, your health information as it resides in your DNA and allow you to monetize that without relinquishing control and without handing it over to pharmaceutical companies that can potentially exploit it uh, or to insurance companies. Maybe most significantly, BitNation, that is designing new digital blockchain-based jurisdictions where dispute resolutions uh, through peer-to-peer -peer markets disrupt the monopoly that nation states believe they have over the way that nonviolent conflict is resolved in society. So I have been talking about these opportunities for many, many, many years. People come to me and say, oh, you love Bitcoin. This is so great. But you know, uh, you told me about it a year ago. Now Bitcoin is $10. It's too late. <laughs> or a year later or two years later, whatever it is, now Bitcoin is $100. It's too late. Well, one of the opening talks today was talking about the nature of the exponential curve. All of it, practically speaking, is in front of us. It is not too late. And that is why at Network Society we are designing a suite of mobile apps that are going to actually pay you to please start learning. To pay you to start living a life where you are empowered to uh, explore what are the degrees of evolutionary fitness that you can ascertain that give you the resilience and your family and your community that a complex and chaotic world will not guarantee. The difference between dinosaurs and us is that they didn't have telescopes. Let's please use the telescopes of reason and science and technology to further the objectives of enlightenment and this wonderful complex civilization we have built in a manner that must be different from the previous centuries. Um, it was easy uh, for uh, those that founded the United States to say, we can start over. They had an entire continent to depredate and then to start building upon. Today, that privilege is unavailable. We have an entire planet to care for. The new organizations that are going to empower and emancipate communities, giving dignity to the people who form the communities that are the leaders of the 21st century, are going to test what is possible at an increasing pace. This acceleration is very natural. Going from idea to action is really just a question of wanting to do it. To gain additional degrees of freedom, additional opportunities, and unbounded future ways of building a global civilization. And it is your choice. And I hope that you will join me in this exploration. Thank you. Did you like my talk? 
Was it provocative, informative, actionable? I hope that at least some of you will be uh, called to action, that you will say, oh, I have been procrastinating learning about Bitcoin and blockchain, or I thought solar energy or investing in international real estate or learning about personalized health were uh, beyond the, the things that I could be doing. And instead, it is not like that. You can do it with simple steps and start to improve your chances in the society, not of the future, of already the things that are happening. In order to be more emancipated, more empowered, and to feel that you are part of this future that we are building together. And if you do that, and if you enjoy the context, and you want me to keep uh, producing them, feel free to send questions or propose new topics that you would like to be covered. And of course, on Patreon, you can become a supporter of the context for as little as five euro a month or five dollars a month. I don't even remember which. You can support concretely uh, these efforts. It's a symbolic sum that uh, makes you part of a community of fans and followers and uh, enables me to help together with my team keep the coding the world.